What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today we are going to be introducing a score to our uh, 2D Endless Runner tutorial. So over here you'll see we do not have a game manager yet. So that is the first thing we need to do. So what I'm going to do is just create an empty game manager object, just reset, transform and add a component called game manager. Now this is going to be what we use to basically just handle any of the uh, higher up things. So we're going to be using a singleton pattern um, and not a full singleton pattern. We're just going to be using the um, an instance, a static instance, so we can easily um, get access to the game manager because we need to reference it in a few different scripts. Um, so I'm just going to create a region here, which I'm going to call singleton. Uh, this is just so we can... Uh, basically use it and hide it as well so inside of the singleton we just want a uh, a public static game manager called instance um, and then we're going to have an awake function that just says instance is equal uh, sorry uh, instance is equal to this but before we do that we just want to check if instance is not equal to or is equal to null and if it's not equal to null then we probably have an error but for now this is fine so there we go so now our singleton is hidden away in here so we could uh reference this when we need to now the next thing we want to do for our score ui is actually have a public uh float called current score which we'll just set to zero f by default then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a public integer that returns the neat or the um a pretty score um which is basically just gonna return our current score but we're gonna use math f dot round to int um, to round it off to the nearest integer when we get our pretty score. This way it'll just be easier to display it um, on screen. We should also change this to a string and turn this to to string. This will just allow us to see the score. This will allow us to see the score and also just be able to append this to any text we want in our UI. I'm then going to set a public ball called is playing and sell it equal to false by default we're then going to say in our update method is if is playing then our current score should be plus equal to time dot delta time now we're going to be doing our score based on how long you survive um, and here all we're doing is we're going to increase our score over time and only when we're playing. If we're not playing, then this will not um, this will not work. We also want a public void called game over. So this will be called when our player dies, and we're just going to set our current score equal back to zero. In the future, we'll add a high score system to this as well. So once we do get a high, uh, a high score, we'll create a new high score and save it to our, uh, well, save it basically as well. So that's all we need for our, um, our game manager for now. Let's go back to Unity and we should see some of these appearing on the right here. There we go. Let's move this up. And let's go to our spawner script because I want to go in here and check, do a couple of checks. So where we've got update, I only want to do the spawn loop if our game manager dot instance dot is playing. Now this will just let it know that when we're playing, we will uh, we could spawn objects. When we're not playing, we will no longer be spawning objects. We also want to go back to um, our player script. We actually want to go to our player collision script. So when we do collide in here, we can say game manager dot instance dot game over. I also need to go into game over and set is playing equal to false. I'm then going to set up a really quick, uh, a really quick cheat system. I call it a cheat system. We're just going to set up um, a if input dot get button down or get key down and we're just going to look for the um for example the k key um we're then going to set is 
playing equal to true. The, the only reason we're doing this is so we can play the game by pressing K. In the future, we're actually going to have in some UI where we click play and the game will play, obviously, like a menu system. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick it out with an is playing is equal to true by pressing the key or the K key. So now if we go back to our game, we go to our game manager, make sure it's just play focus and then go on our game manager so we can see the is playing. If we press play, nothing should really be happening. There should nothing should be spawning. Um, you can see is playing is equal to and our score isn't going up. But if we press K, you can see our is playing starts. Obstacles should start spawning. There you go. You can see them and our time is going up. So you can see we can now avoid it. And when we die, you can see is playing stops. Our score gets reset to zero and nothing else spawns. Our obstacles just go off screen. Now we do need to set up a garbage collection for this, but that will be in our optimization video in the future. So we will be using a pooling system and a way to destroy the objects once they go off screen. So the next step is to actually set up the game UI. So currently you can see there's no UI on screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new canvas, which we are just going to leave as canvas. We could leave this on over, uh, overlay and we're getting this weird warning here. So I'm just going to tick this box. It gets rid of the warning. I don't know if that's useful or not, but that's that's what we're doing. And then I want to scale our thing with uh, screen size. Now I'm going to pretend this game is uh, going to be in 16 by 9 resolution. You could just do 16 by 9, uh, but I like to give it like a proper resolution, like 1080p. And then we're going to set this to probably the height because we want it to match the heights off the screen. Now, in here, we want to set up a, UI, a new UI text mesh pro instance but we need to import obviously the text mesh uh well text mesh pro into our game so let's just click import tmp essentials and that is all we need so that will allow us to actually use text mesh pro now you can see we have this new text if we go back to our scene we can actually zoom out here and you can see this is uh how it looks in here we can move this around i'll go back to our game because then we can actually see what it looks like in game i'm going to set this to zero by default i'm going to set this to about 300 by 300 and I'm going to set it to be stuck to the top of our screen. I'm then going to make sure the text is in the center. I'm going to set it to auto size, but I'm going to give it a max size of something like 256, uh, maybe uh, 160. We're going to make it bold and we're also going to go to our we're going to go to our color and I'm just going to put the opacity down something like 64 so it looks like it's fading into the background. You can even probably go down to 32 because then that looks kind of cool like it's just in the background. It's part of the background. It's just ticking up. Now we can rename this to our score UI tech or just score UI. Now in our game manager, we could actually go in here and set up um, in here, but we're going to create a separate handler. And you can see here we're also getting enough error now. It's telling us normal and tangent are not needed. So we can actually just select the text chords uh, and that's it. So just if there's any errors, I'd normally just select what they say because normally they're just telling you something's not, not right. And uh, there you go. That's, that's sorted. Anyway, back to this. So on our canvas, I'm going to have a UI manager script that will handle all our UI updates. So now in UI manager, we just want to clear this, this, and what we want is we want to be using TM Pro. This is just text, um, this is just text mesh pros uh, namespace, which allows us to be able to create a or a serialized field, a private, and we're gonna say text mesh pro U GUI. Um, and we're gonna call this our score UI. And then in an on GUI method, so this is on GUI, so on graphics user interface, this will be called. Um, and what we want to do is just say when our, basically, we just want to set the, our score UI dot text equal to our game manager dot instance dot pretty score now there's probably a better way to do this so what we want to do is we want to create a reference to our game manager we're just going to say game manager gm and then in gm we're just going to set it equal to this here 
and this way we cache our um our game engines we're not calling it on every gui update which happens multiple times a frame so you do not want to be making loads of reference calls inside of here you kind of want to stash it so you can just keep using it there and this should update with our game so let's go back to um our back to our screen here and this is reset itself again so we're just going to ignore this and pretend it did there you go it all ignored perfect we can ignore all of this and you can see here we need our score ui which we can drag in there hit play and now once we start hitting k this should start updating so if we hit k you can see it goes to one two three and it will just keep counting up as we go so you can see now we have a score happening in our game which is really nice um, and now we can avoid obstacles and get through now there's a few things which we want to do you see when we die the game ends uh obviously our player's gone so we can't restart but that's all going to come in a later video what i just want to say is in the next video we're going to be adding in our actual game loop so we're going to be adding in a lose uh ui so when we actually get killed we actually have to um a, a, new, a ui will pop up saying you lost you, and it will tell us the score we got to and also anything else we need to know and some buttons to replay or go back to the menu we'll also set up a um a menu ui as well so we can actually start the game from a proper click um and then we will actually have a core game loop that we can keep playing after that we'll set up a high score system and then we'll also add in some uh post processing in a future video along with object pooling for optimization and also garbage collector for our spawner that keeps going off screen we're also going to make our spawner get more difficult over time so it will spawn more objects more frequently uh, depending on how far you get through the game the current time of the game so that's what you have to look forward to guys so i hope you are enjoying this series so far you can get all the source code on my patreon it helps support the channel and also gives you quick access to the source code each lesson is uploaded from now on so on the 2d endless runner you'll have a you can download each ledge lesson individually so if you only need let's say lesson two you can go and grab lesson two just on its own without having to bring the whole project down um, and if you want any of the previous projects such as the tower defense or anything like that you can go down below into the link and it will all be on my patreon so guys thank you for tuning into this video i've really enjoyed making them and i hope you have enjoyed watching them i will see you in the next one don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and peace out